Teen Project is a parent to the parentless. We go out and find the kids that have left the foster care system to homelessness and bring them back to safety. Since 1980, about 65% of foster kids leave foster care on their 18th birthday to homelessness, where other kids are going to college and getting ready for their life. Foster kids are on D-Day. That's it for them, and they hit the streets and they go to homeless shelters. And when I found that out, I was devastated. I called my best friend and we got on LegalZoom and we started a little charity on our nights and weekends and we said we're going to save a couple kids and this thing has gone crazy wild and blown up and we're saving hundreds of kids every year and with our texting program thousands. Um, when I was growing up my biological mom didn't want me and my biological father was abusive. I went into foster care and um, I got in some trouble and I was in group homes and then I was in foster placement and then I was also in juvenile hall. And so they kept me until I was 18 years old and then they just let me out. And I went onto the streets. Um, I didn't have anywhere to go. And what it's done for me is it's, it's brought me a sense of a home which is something I didn't have. And because of the house mom that's here, I've gotten a sense of what it's like to have a mom that cares and, and wants you. Well, I was in my addiction really bad. I was um, addicted to meth and I was in and out of jail. I went to jail for two years and I got out. I was still using, I ended up getting pregnant. So when I went back to jail, I, I kept telling myself, okay, Christian, when you get out, you're gonna do better for your son, you're gonna do this. And I just couldn't get the hang of it. So I lost custody of my son and I ended up going to the Teen Project, the rehab facility in Sun Valley. And ever since then, I've been out here for two months. I'm working two jobs and I'm doing everything I can to get my son back and build a foundation for my future. I am. Um, in the last month, I was raped. I went down to 86 pounds. I was in a very bad relationship with someone that I thought I was in love with, but and um, everything just led to um, a purpose, like an intentional overdose. And um, the overdose was something that I could have not come back from, but I did. So I figured that this is, this is my purpose, you know, to go to treatment, get clean, and figure out what my God's purpose for me is. This is an actual home with actual moms and sisters. And you can really breathe in and breathe out and know we're not gonna throw you back on the street and you're safe here and you don't need a lock on your door because everybody is safe here and we're a family and we're surrounded by love. I grew up in the foster care system myself. I was homeless. I hit every branch on the way down through drug addiction and trafficking and everything that you could imagine up to the point my life was almost taken while I was on the streets. Um, and since that time, I've been rescuing foster kids. I have 36 foster kids of my own. When I got rescued from the streets, I was given the two things we give to kids that are primary, which is sobriety through drug rehab and vocational schooling. And that fueled my career in technology. And what we did when we started the team project is we had to find a way to reach the kids that were out there. Now, most kids are either have the, their cell phones or they're at the library using internet access or Starbucks. So we started an online hotels.com type database of shelters so they could find a place to go. So create, we created a program where the kids could text the word shelter and their zip code to a short code 99,000 and within 40 seconds, they'll return a shelter to their phone, regardless of where they at, they're at in the United States. I would say thank you so much for saving my life because without Lori, I would still be on the streets, you know, walking the streets and having sex for money and drugs. My goals, I either want to be a makeup artist or do like assistant, like office work, you know, do paperwork and stuff. And then hopefully get married one day and have a kid. Um, it felt really good, you know, like I like felt like everyone was family, you know, and it just like, it touched my heart a lot. Everyone was kind, you know, and like I read Miss Laura's story, Miss Lori's story, and it was just, it was mind blowing. I'm like, wow, you know, I was like, one day I want to talk to her, you know. It was actually pretty cool. Um, it felt back at home. I had the support and love that I needed. Um, I was abused at the age of six. I come from a domestic violence relationship. My father was a perpetrator. Definitely, I don't know what I'll be without them. Um, if you would have told me 30 days ago I was going to have still a positive relationship with my dad, I would have told you you're lying. I want to thank my house mom especially because she's given, she's given me a feeling of a mother that cares about me and that loves me. 
you know, like we have a little dog, we have a family here. And without them and the idea of them trying to give the parents to the parentless, like without that, I don't, I would have never experienced that and what that felt like. And I think that that's so important at the base of every individual, especially kids, you know, to be able to go on with their lives. I feel like they saved my life. They're, they care. You know what I mean? Like I've been to treatment centers and they don't care. They just, they're there because they're there. But Lori, she's helped me out more than I could believe. Oftentimes I'll see a kid in the lobby um, or coming in crying and I'm like, what are you crying about? And they're like, someone cares about me. Like you guys care enough that I just get to come here? And I remember one night I was working late at our free hub facility on grants and I had my door closed and nobody knew I was out there. And um, when I walked out of my office, there was a bunch of kids sitting in the hallway crying. And I was like, what are you guys crying about? And they were like, this place. Like the fact that people got together and created this place for us. We just can't believe that it exists, that a place like this exists. And it's in those moments where you see a kid come in broken and with no dreams because they've forgotten about their dreams when they were left on the street. They just kind of pushed it aside like that's not going to happen. But when they come in and we tell them, you know, you can go to school for anything you want to go to school for. We've had kids that want to be doctors, lawyers, vet techs. They want to be in culinary school. They want to design things. Um, just to tell them that we're going to help you revive your dreams and you're going to have an equal chance at life is everything for these kids.